Hey guys, welcome to another video by Into Fly Fishing, a channel dedicated to helping you choose the right gear, tie the right flies, and cast the right way so you can catch that perfect fish. In this week's video, I'm gonna be helping you to tie up a new fly reel. So you've just got a new fly reel in the, in the mail. Uh, maybe you ordered it on Amazon or from your favorite fly shop, and it came like this. Basically, you have the reel that's empty, and you have some fly lines, some fly backing, and the tapered leader. And now you have to spool it all on there. Of course, it is nice when you get a reel that's pre-spooled and everything is ready to go, but that isn't always the case. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the steps to easily set up a brand new fly reel. So first of all, um, there's a lot of great videos on YouTube already about this, and I followed along with some of them as well when I was first starting out, but I noticed that a lot of them require tools. You know, they have a drill or they have, um, some kind of spooler or they have you know they have an extra rod that they have lying around that they've rigged up with some magical fly line spooling mechanism and that's just not the case for everyone sometimes you're traveling or you just don't have the tools at your disposal and you want to set up your fly reel so that's exactly what this video is going to be it's going to be the simplest and easiest way to set up a brand new fly reel for those who don't have any tools so to start off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be reeling the, the fly line onto the reel first, and then the backing over top of that so that we can measure exactly how much backing we're gonna need. Generally, when you buy backing, you're gonna get about 100 yards or more in a spool, but that's usually a little bit too much, especially nowadays where a lot of fly reels are made with this large arbor design. So you really aren't gonna use all of the backing. So if you were to just you know reel all your backing on and then reel the fly line on right after that, you would have too much line on the reel. And then when you're trying to reel in a fish, it would get caught on the frame and it's just not a great way to do it. And also if you don't put enough backing on the reel, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna have, you know, a lot longer time to reel in a fish because you're not gonna have that large arbor. So today we're gonna make sure that we put on the exact right amount. And to do that, we're gonna do it backwards at first. Then we're gonna unspool all of it and then we're gonna spool it back on the right way with the backing first on the reel, then the fly line, then the fly leader. So the first thing you wanna do when you get a new fly reel is to make sure that it's reeling the right direction. So for me, I'm a right-handed angler. I cast with my right hand. My reel should be the handle of the reel facing to the left like this. So that's the way. And you'll notice to test to make sure it's reeling the right way, you can use the drag knob. So put the drag all the way on max and then reel in the way you should be reeling in, which is if you're a right-handed angler, uh, the handle's on the left-hand side of the reel, you'll be reeling in a counterclockwise direction. And if you have the drag turned all the way up that way, you should have no drag on the reel while you're reeling in, of course. And then if you try to go the other way that the fish is gonna be pulling, then you'll have you know, the drag. So as long as you're reeling the right way with no drag, when the drag is turned to max, you're good to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this fly line and this is really important. On every fly line, there should be a sticker on one end of the, of the line that says this end to reel or something similar. And in some cases, it'll even be a different color. So with this fly line here, there's one color for the reel end that's gonna go into the reel and one color that's gonna be where you tie on your leader and your tippet. Make sure you know what end that sticker's on. And we're gonna start by putting this sticker that says this end to the reel into the into the reel first and reel that all on so to do that i'm just going to take off the spool of this reel because it makes it a little bit easier to access and i'm just going to tape this bit of the fly line onto this this reel here so i've got a little piece of tape all right once that's taped on i'm going to put it back into the reel okay another thing i just want to mention is that as you can see here i have this funny contraption um, when you're spooling off of the fly line and the backing, you have two options. You can get somebody else to help you and they basically hold the spool in their hand or with a pencil going through it. Um, but if you're by yourself, then you can set up something like this just by using hangers or um, this is just tubing I found lying around the, the house here. So you just gotta set something up so that while you're reeling, it's gonna you know, spin freely. So right, um, right now what I'm gonna do is start reeling in this fly line. And I'm just going to be careful to make sure that I'm kind of putting it on somewhat evenly. And you're also going to want to keep a little bit of tension on the line as you're doing this and just guide it back and forth with your finger as you would if you were reeling in a fish. 
So once you've got the fly line all the way reeled in, the next thing we're gonna do is reel on the backing. So I've got my backing here set up in a similar situation where it can freely spool. And I'm just gonna tape this together here. This is just temporary. And then I'm gonna start reeling in this backing so that I can measure exactly how much backing I need. Again, just kind of keeping it guided so that it's even on the spool so that you know when you're doing this for real, you're gonna have the right amount. All right, so once you've reached a point on the reel where you have about, you know, almost a centimeter or about a half centimeter, a uh, quarter inch between the frame and the backing, that's enough. That's, you don't wanna to go too much past that because you don't want it to be too full and you don't want to do too much less than that because like I said, it'll be a longer retrieve rate. So now I'm going to cut this off. And yeah, I don't even have scissors right now. So this really is doing this with absolutely no tools. All right, so now comes the fun task of unspooling all of this so that I can put it on the right way. So to do that, I'm going to put it back on the spool it came from by wrapping it up. It'll take a long time. And then I'm going to do the same with the fly line and then I'm gonna reel it all back on in the right direction, backing first, then fly line next. And then at the very end, when I'm done doing that, I'm gonna show you how to attach the tippet and the leader, and then we're good to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is reduce the drag all the way on my reel so that it comes out very easily. And then I'm gonna start spooling this back the other way. Alright, so that's it. I've made it back to my point on the backing where I started and that only took about five minutes so it wasn't so bad. And now I'm going to do the same with the fly line. So I'm going to detach this taped bit here and I'm going to tape this on to the fly line spool like this. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with this. Just spool it on. All right, and that's it. Now I've got the fly line back on this spool here and I'm ready to reel this all back onto the reel in the right direction with the backing first. So let's do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put these back onto my funny little spooling contraptions here so that I can easily reel them back on to the reel. So I'll start with the backing one. Like I said, these are just a couple tubes that I had lying around. Not too difficult to figure out and I just bent them around, stuck them in this dresser so they hold in place. Same for the fly line. All right, so those are nicely secured back into place so I can easily reel them in. Take the tape off the inside of the reel. And like I said, I'm gonna start with the backing. So I'm gonna take some of this backing here. I'm gonna loop this around the reel, going in the direction that I reel. So I'm reeling this way, counterclockwise. So you have to put the line so it's gonna be reeling the same way. So it goes in on the bottom and then up over the top. And then here I'm just gonna tie a double surgeon's loop. So just kind of like a noose style knot. Maybe I'll do a triple just to be extra safe. Pull that tight. I'm just gonna snip off this tag end here. Now I'm going to tighten this down so that it holds onto the reel. And I'm going to start reeling this in. And this time I have to be a little bit more careful to make sure there's tension on the reel and to make sure that I'm reeling it evenly. So here we go.
All right, there you go. I've reached the end of my backing to exactly where I had measured it. And now the next step is to just attach the fly line to this backing and then to reel it all in. So that's pretty simple. I have my backing or I have my fly line here. And as you can see, it has the this end to the reel sticker. And I can remember that that's the light colored end. So I'll remove that sticker now because my fly line has two separate colors. But if yours doesn't, make sure you remember. Always keep track of which side is the end to the reel. And what we're gonna do for this one is just a simple loop to loop connection. It's very easy to do. So all you do is take the end of your backing and tie a double surgeon's knot, or actually I'm gonna do a triple again just to make sure it's secure. So with most modern day fly lines, you'll see that they have this welded loop and that makes it very easy to do a loop to loop connection. So now that we've made our own loop in our backing, all we have to do is stick that through the loop in the fly line like this. And once that's on there like that, you take your fly line and go through, take the whole spool and go through that. And then when you pull it out, the two loops will be interlocked like that. So now I'm gonna put this spool back on here and I'm gonna reel on my fly line, this time again being careful to make sure that I've got tension and I'm reeling it in straight and even. All right, so now I have the fly line all reeled back onto the reel as well as the backing. The last step in setting up your fly reel is just to attach the tippet. This here is a 3X 15 foot tapered leader. And so your leader should have a loop on it like this at the end, and that's a tied loop. And just like what we did before, we're gonna do a loop to loop connection because as you can see, the fly line also has a loop welded into it. And all modern fly lines these days have this loop and it's super handy, probably took them years and years to perfect and it makes it a lot easier for setting up your fly line on your reel. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the leader first and just take it from the looped end, the thick end of your leader, and just slowly pull it out. And then once you've got it all out and untangled, just take your hand and squeeze it between your index finger and your thumb and just pull it to kind of straighten it out. You can also get a line straightener. If you have a leader straightener in your, in your bag, in your fly box, you can take that out and use it. But this basically just gets it a little bit straightened out so it's not gonna be so annoying while we're doing the next step. All right, so the next step is really easy. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the line and it's always line through leader. So put the line loop through the leader loop and then just take this back end of the leader here and bend it over a little bit so that it's easy to stick through this loop here. So you're kind of creating a secondary loop behind the main tied loop of the leader, sticking it through. And then you're gonna pull the leader all the way through the other way. And then when you pull on this, it's gonna make it a loop to loop connection. Just make sure that knot goes through the fly line loop. And there you go. Pull it tight and you have a loop to loop connection perfect loop to loop connection every time when you have the leader and the line both with the loop on the end. That's it, now all I have to do is reel in the rest of this line and my reel is ready to go. There we go, that's it. If you don't have a loop on the end of your leader or on the end of your fly line, you're gonna have to do a blood knot or something like that, but those are entirely different videos. Those take a lot of time and practice. So try to buy your fly line and your fly leader with a pre-welded and pre-tied loop in each. And you should have no problem putting this all together just like I did. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification button so you'll be notified next time we make a new video. We're doing new fly tying videos every week. We'll be doing a lot of gear reviews and unboxing and we'll also be doing different fly fishing destinations from the US and around the world, so make sure you subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, tight lines. See you later.